Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. fabulous first grade. Welcome back to our PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Hammock and I'm here to help you practice and learn all the skills you need to be an excellent reader and writer. Hey, I was reading a story called Edward the Emu by Sheena Knowles, illustrated by Rod Clement. Edward is an emu at the zoo and he is bored. He's not so sure he wants to be an emu anymore. He thinks being another kind of animal would be better. So he goes in the evening after the zookeeper goes home, he leaves his enclosure and goes to different places in the zoo to try out what it would be like to be different animals. When he finally decides to come home, something amazing happens and changes his life forever. You will definitely want to know about Edward's adventures. Now, this story, even though it tells about true animals that live in the zoo, and some of the things that it says about those animals is true, this is a fiction story. That means it is make-believe, because do emus talk? No, they don't. But it's fun, and you might enjoy this if you like animals. So I hope you look for it on Sora or at your county public library. All right, today we are gonna check and see who's in the number four spot on our Sora countdown. Are you ready? Okay, let's see, Bernie was number five. So let's try out number four and see. Turner Tigers, great job, Turner. Terrific, you are doing a great job, wow. I think you've been on our list before too. Hey boys and girls, I would love to send you an activity book. All you need to do is write to me here in our PBS classroom. You can send it right to the address on your screen. Do you see it down there? Write it down. Or you can send me an email. Make sure you give me your address so I know where to send this. I would love to know what you're reading so that I can recommend it to the other boys and girls in our class. So please write me a letter and tell me what your favorite stories are to read. I would love to know about that, and I'll send you one of these in the mail. All right, my friends, it is time for us to train our ears for sound. We have to train our ears and listen for sounds before we can read and write them. Today, we're playing a substitution game. So remember, a substitute is when you take something out and replace it with something new. Do you remember that? Great. All right, so I am going to say the word stem. Listen to the word. Listen to each one of the phonemes. S-t-e-m. Stem. All right, now I'm going to substitute the e eh for an or. Let's try it. Or, m, mm, st, orm, storm. Did you hear how stem became storm? We substituted the vowel. All right, let's try a few more. You, you ready? It, it is a little tricky, but I know you can do it. Here we go. My word is pet, p, e, t, pet. I want you to change the e eh to an or. Ready? Or t port. Great job. All right, let's try tin. T I N tin. Let's change the I to an or. Are you ready? Let me help you out. T I N. We're gonna change the I to an or. Ready? T orn. Torn. Great. Sometimes that visual reminder helps, right? All right, how about card? K -r -d. Card. Let's change the R to an OR. K 
Ord, cord, terrific. Did you hear all of those or sounds? Why do you suppose I chose those sounds for us to practice? That is exactly right, because our focus sound is the or sound. And we're gonna get to that in just a minute, but before we do, let's do a little fluency, just to remind ourselves of those sound spelling patterns that we've already learned. And remember, if one of those is giving you trouble, I want you to write it down. That's right, and I want you to practice all week long because we're building our brains to be strong readers, okay? All right, here we go. E, Y says E, say them with me. O, A says O, A, Y says A, I, G, H says I, E, E says E, O, E says E, O, W says O, E, A says E, A, I says A, and here's our vowel controlled, I, R says er, U, R says er, E, R says er. Oh, so many ers, right? Okay, and then we have one more vowel controlled that we learned already. That's the star card, A, R says R. Remember those ers come from the shirt card and then R is from the star card. And this week, we are looking at the corn card, all right? Because we're focusing on that sound spelling of or. O-A-R says or. O-R says or. And O-R-E says or. All three of those say or. And we're going to practice reading some words with that right now. Let's try this one. Remember that O-R-E and the sound that it makes. Here we have k, or, core. Good, let's try this one. P, or, ch, porch. Good job. B, or, d, board. I wanna show you something that kind of popped into my mind when we were reading just now. I want you to look at this word because I wanna make sure that you know the difference. So I'm gonna move this over because I want you to look at this word here. B or D board and B or D board. Remember in our story, Edward the emu was bored. That means he didn't have anything to do. He was feeling gloomy. That's this kind of board, a feeling. This kind of board is like a piece of wood, okay? Look at the difference, do you see? So when you use the O-A-R spelling, you're talking about a piece of wood or some kind of poster board. It's a thing. This kind of board is a feeling, okay? So it's important to know the difference because when we're reading stories, we wanna know what we're talking about. And that will help us with our comprehension. And remember, comprehension, it means we understand what we're reading. Because boys and girls, that's what reading is. Besides sounding out the words, it needs to make sense. So we need to do both. We need to be able to sound out the words, and we need to think about what the words are telling us, because that's how it makes sense. And that's what reading's about. It should always make sense. All right, let's take a look at our reading uh, chart and practice a few of those words with those spelling patterns. Are you ready? Okay, let's start here. R, or, roar. W, orn, warn. F, orm, form. St, orm, storm. Ch, or, Chore, here's a two syllable word. We, do you see the small word inside of it? B, four, good job. Remember when we have 
words that have more than one syllable, we need to try to look for those little words inside. Soar and fort. Great reading. All right, we're kind of getting quick on or short on time, so let's quickly get our high frequency words going. We have two that we're going to practice today. We have sure, S-U-R-E, sure, and guess, G-U-E-S-S, guess. Let's look at our sentences and see which one the words belong in. Can you, hmm, what is in the box? And I am, hmm, I will do well on my test. Which one goes in the first one? Can you, yeah, right, good job. Can you guess what is in the box? Good job. All right, so that means this one needs the word sure. I am sure I will do well on my test. Great reading. All right, today I'm gonna talk to you about something you might already know, but they are called abbreviations. Have you heard that word before? It means a shorter way to write something. Oh, yeah, you're right. We did talk about contractions, and that's a shorter way to write two words, but this is a little bit different. So I'm gonna read a sentence to you, and I want you to sh look with your eyes and see if you notice the difference. Are you ready? Now, you're not gonna hear a difference, but you are gonna see a difference. So I want you to use those good looking eyes. Are you ready? Okay, be a detective. Mr. Ford is my teacher. Okay, did you see that one? All right, now here's my next sentence. Mr. Ford is my teacher. What did you notice? Right, look at this word here. It says Mr. Now, an abbreviation means writing it in a shorter way. And here is how we do that. This is the word Mr. written like an abbreviation. I know, isn't that cool? But when we read it, we read it the exact same way. Mr. Mr. Cool, huh? Let, let's look at a couple more and then we'll practice more later this week. So let's take a look at this word. This word says Mrs. Mrs. Like my name is Mrs. Hammock. And if I want to write the abbreviation, it looks like this. Mrs. Yeah, I know. I don't know why there's an R. It's kind of crazy. And then I have doctor. And this is how I write the abbreviation. Do you see how the abbreviation has a period at the end? Important to remember. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Goodbye now, goodbye now, the clock says we're done. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day and practice all those skills. Bye-bye. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.